All right. This afternoon's class is the routing and mapping class. We're going to go through how to set up your frequencies, how to set up route technicians, and adding stops to a schedule. We'll also look at printing out route sheets, how to move the schedule forward week to week, talk a little bit about route tickets and um, how we can use it to help kind of automate some of the billing. So to start with, I'm going to bring up my route schedule, which do that just by pressing the route schedule button on the top toolbar. And the first thing we're going to need to do is set up some different frequencies in which you service your customers. Now the route schedule should be used for any type of kind of reoccurring service that you have a technician or a crew going to, you know, a set list of customers maybe every Monday or every other Monday. Um, and we're going to set up those frequencies first just by double clicking in this field labeled frequency. Now here is where I could set up, let's say, a weekly frequency. I'm just going to give it a label. And I'm going to tell that that those stops, anything weekly, is going to reoccur once every seven days. Now it's important to note we do have a, a basically three different ways you can set up frequencies. You can either use the length of days, you could use interval settings, which is over here in the middle, or you could use the monthly selection on the far right. We cannot use a combination of the three. We have to pick one of the three per frequency. Maybe we have a bi-weekly, which would be you know every other week. That would be once every 14 days. We have a simple monthly, which I recommend doing every 28 days, every four weeks. And I recommend doing eight days for monthly, which is 30 and 31, for a couple different reasons. Mainly, um, if you set up a schedule to, or a, a stop to be monthly, maybe every 30 or 31 days, and you set up a customer on a Friday, eventually that stop's going to roll to a Saturday or say, and you'll have to make sure you manage that and reset it back to a Friday. In a, you know, in that scenario, if you do it every four weeks or every 28 days, it'll always fall on a Friday every four weeks. It's a lot easier to manage. Now, if I wanted to use, let's say, the interval settings, which are for monthly type services, I can maybe create a service called, I'll just call it FM monthly for first Monday monthly. I'm going to tell it to use interval settings, and I'm going to tell it to be the first Monday of every month. Notice if I use interval settings, I check off that little uh, round button there. I leave my length of days blank. Now I could have a frequency called bi-monthly. I'm going to use the monthly selection for this one and check off use monthly. I'm going to leave the length of days and the interval blank. I'm just going to check off every other month. Now you can obviously have um, any of the frequencies that your needs. You could have a yearly every 365. You could have a quarterly, you know, every 188. Um, you could have something maybe called like a one time, which would not reoccur, meaning length of days would be zero. And you would want to make sure that your one time frequencies are set to delete after posting the route meaning after the schedule has been completed or that stop has been completed, it's going to remove itself from the schedule. Now, with the frequencies you see here, you can accommodate most of the different services you would need, even if a customer is multiple times per week. And I'll show you that uh, here in a moment. Let's say you service a customer two times a week or three times a week. We're just going to use a, a weekly frequency. Okay. Once our frequency is set up, the next thing we need to set up are our route technicians or routes. We're going to do that in the same manner, just double click in the route field. 
And here we can set up our technicians or crews. I recommend keeping it simple. Um, the label is pretty much what makes sense to you. I'm going to use R1 for Route 1. You, if this is maybe like a mowing crew, you can have M1, or if this is like an irrigation, you can kind of use different combination of letters, uh, whatever makes sense to you. I do not recommend putting the technician name in the first field. Give the route a label of some kind, and then put the technician name in the second field. This way, if you ever have to replace Bill, all the simply switching one field over. And I could add another technician, R2. Now, you'll see this when we start setting up the schedule. With the service program, you don't have to have a separate route for each day of the week. So you don't have to have like an R1-M for a Route 1 Monday. We can put in a telephone number for the route guys, an email address. The sort order just tells us what order this is going to appear in the dropdown. So for instance, whenever we hit a dropdown for the route, we want R1 to be first, followed by R2. We have a couple different ways of tracking revenue tied to this route as far as if we sent any billing into QuickBooks. The easiest way is probably through a class in QuickBooks. So for R1, we could have the class match the technician. We could have a class in QuickBooks for each technician. This way, any billing tied to that route when it goes to QuickBooks would have that class associated with it. You can run your reports filtered by class or by technician in QuickBooks makes it real easy. You can also use the sales rep. This is really all we need to set up the route technicians. So now when I go to my route schedule, you see I have my frequencies set up and I've got my route set up. Each row on this schedule is going to represent one stop. So now it's just time for the data entry. So I'm going to go ahead and add a weekly stop to the schedule. So I'm going to pick weekly. I'm going to start setting up R1 or bill schedule first. I'm going to pick the day of the week. So we'll use today's date. Maybe we're setting up the Monday schedule for Route 1. This will be stop number one for Monday for Route 1, and I'm going to pick a customer. What we have just told the software is that this customer, Michelle, is going to reoccur every Monday. That's determined by the frequency of weekly, and the next service date is represented in the route date. As you move from week to week, this route date is going to roll with the schedule. So it'll be 2, 3 this Monday. When this week's complete, it's going to roll forward to the 10th, then the 17th, then the 24th. So you don't need to put this customer on the schedule any more than just one time every weekly. If I need to add a second stop to this schedule, I'm going to pick my frequency. I'm going to pick my tech again, R1. I'm still working on Monday schedule, so I'm going to pick the third and stop number two for Monday, and I'll pick my customer. So now I have two stops on the schedule for Monday for round one. Let's say that's all he has on his schedule for Monday, and we're going to go ahead and start setting up his Tuesday schedule. Again, just on the new line, pick your frequency, pick your tech, and I'm going to start setting up the schedule for the fourth, which is Tuesday. This is going to be stop number one for Tuesday. Notice I start my stop number sequence over again. I'm going to pick a customer. This is why you do not have to set up separate routes for different days of the week. You're always going to be able to go and say, I want to see the bill schedule for Tuesday, 
and you would see all of this Tuesday stops. So Route 1 will have a specific schedule for each day of the week, but we don't need to set up a separate route label to manage it. I'm going to go ahead and add one more stop to my Tuesday schedule. I'm going to throw in a biweekly to Route 1. Tuesday, this will be stop number 2. And again, I'm going to pick a customer. So then if I wanted to start working on my schedule for my next, next technician, Route 2, again on the new line, pick my frequency, pick Route 2. I'm going to start working on their Monday schedule. So you can do this out of order. It doesn't matter. This will be stop number one for Route 2 for Monday and pick a customer. So now we've got two stops for Monday for Route 2. Even though we've entered these out of order, if we hit reset or refresh, it'll group them by route by date. So now if you see all the Monday stops are at the top of the list, then getting down into Tuesday's schedule. Real simple. I have a column called Route Notes right after the customer. This is where I can put any notes in for that stop. Now these route notes stay with that stop for the length of the customer. However long it's on this route schedule, those route notes will stay there. They'll never change or be removed unless you delete them. So this is where you can notate out special instructions, maybe a key placement, um, maybe services that need to be performed. So I could put in a note. You can double click in the route notes to see an expanded box where you could enter in very detailed notes. There's no limit to this. Now if I wanted to print a schedule, I could do that simply by going to Route Info, Print Route Sheets. So here I could print a schedule for let's say Route 1 for Monday, or I could do it for the whole week just by adjusting the date range. And then here's the different version or template of the route sheet. This just controls the formatting. I like version 3. It's clean, easy to read. It'll say Route 1, Bill, for Monday, February 3rd. Here are his two stops, customer name, address. Frequency says weekly. And then we have a square under each customer that has the route notes that you can see. Now there are a bunch of different versions here that you can go through that have varying amounts of information or comment fields. So you can pick the one that best fits your needs. Now you can print out a schedule for everyone just by leaving the route blank. And I hit print. Now this will first start printing Route 1. And then if I go to the next page, I've got Route 2 schedule. Now scroll on further to the right. We have a lot of other information we can track. First starting with suspended. This column allows you to temporarily suspend a stop or suspend service for a customer. If we mark a stop as suspended, it will not print out um, on the route sheets. And it's a great way to freeze an account, maybe if they've stopped paying or you know, if you're doing lawn work and it's too dry that week to do a cut. You can suspend their service. When you move the schedule forward at the end of the week, it's going to prompt you to want to reset suspended stops, which would automatically put this back into the schedule the following week. You can track a missed reason. If we double click in the missed reason, it allows us to set up a couple codes. Maybe we missed the reason uh, customer canceled.
Maybe it was uh, missed due to weather. This way, if you do miss a stop, you could record the reason for that week, and it would be stored in the customer's history. So you'd always be able to give the customer a quick answer to why you missed the service if you're going back and looking through their history. You have a stop good through date. So if we put a specific date in here, when the schedule reaches that date, it's automatically going to suspend service for that customer. So it's very handy for any type of seasonal uh, work or something you do. Um, maybe the customer has prepaid for maintenance through a certain date, and at that date it would suspend service to remind you to you know, charge that customer again. You have a route time. So here you could put in a budgeted amount of time for each stop. This does a couple different things. When you look at some reporting data, you can compare the budgeted amount of time versus the actual time on site and get an over and under. It also gives you a summary of the total time on the route at the bottom. So you can see we have 2.6 hours on the schedule right now, look down at the bottom. If I filter, I just want to look at Route 1 for Monday, and I pick the date the 3rd, it tells me there's only an hour of work on his route, so he could handle more stops. Now we also have a way on the far right to track the number of stops for a customer. So if I put in a start date, maybe I'm budgeting that they've either prepaid for a certain amount of services, maybe they prepaid for the year so they get 52 services if they're weekly. This will keep a running count of how many services they've had versus how many are remaining. Some of the nice things I can do right off the route schedule is I can hit email customers. Just like hitting email right off the task list. I can maybe email everybody on route one that is getting service for tomorrow a message. Maybe I'm notifying them that due to the weather, we're not going to be able to service your address. We'll make you up later this week. So there's no more having to call multiple customers. You can be proactive. Now, the one thing that if you've watched any of the other videos or if you're new to the program, the one thing we have to do every week is post the route. Now, that's done at the very bottom of the route schedule. You're going to see a button that says post route. And think of this as accounting terms as post meaning complete. So what this is doing is basically you're completing the schedule for the week and moving your schedule forward. So let's say... Let's assume that today is Friday the 7th. I'm going to put in the date range of the week we just completed. So I put in the 3rd through the 7th, and I hit post route. Here's that prompt. Do I want to reset suspended stops prior to 2-7? If I hit yes, anything suspended is automatically going to be put back into the schedule. Now if you look at my route schedule, in particular the route date, everything's rolled forward one week. So now I've moved my schedule forward into the next week. You have to do this to move the schedule forward. If you don't, your dates are always going to be whatever you set them up on. They're never going to move. You also have the option of doing this at the end of every day instead of the end of every week. I think doing it every week is a little easier to manage, but you could, you know, let's say today's Monday the 10th. At the end of Monday, you could just put in the 10th through the 10th post route. Everything you've done that day moves forward. And then at the end of Tuesday, you would put the 11th through the 11th post route. Now we have a couple different things that happen when you post the route. The first is it generates history. So if you go to route info schedule history, 
every time you post the route, you'll see the history is generated. Let me get out some of the older stuff in here. So there we are. We posted the route one time, so it set up the history. This is going to show us, you know, if the stop was suspended that week, if what history is in. So all of that information you set up and manage in the route schedule week is reflected in the customer's history or in the schedule. Now moving forward just a little bit, there are a couple other screens I want to show you, but not until we first talk about route tickets. Now there are a couple different ways you can manage billing off the route schedule, and we're either going to use a combination of them. Um, the method I may show you may not fit exactly how you need to do billing, um, but it should give you a good start on where to kind of where to go. We can use route tickets themselves which is basically a work order for each stop on the schedule. This is great if you have customers where you charge something per service. You could also use route tickets if you charge if you charge them maybe like a flat monthly rate, but you maybe charge them for anything extra you do during each service. That would be another great use for using route tickets for billing. <coughs> So if I wanted to set up customers for per service billing, right off the rough schedule, I'm just going to double click on their customer name. I'm then going to go to pricing, edit pricing, and here I'm going to put in maybe, let's say, weekly service this is my line item from QuickBooks, and we charge them 25 per service. And I put in that they are serviced weekly. I'm going to hit close and go to my next customer. Pricing, edit pricing. Put in weekly service. Maybe they get 15. And they're done weekly as well. Okay, so I've set up a couple customers with pricing. So what this is going to do is we can actually create a, for lack of a better word, an invoice for each stop on the schedule automatically. We would do this by going to Route Info, Auto Generate Route Tickets. What we can tell the software now is we want to create tickets for everything on the schedule for the 10th. I'm going to hit generate tickets. If I hit view tickets, if we look at just the ones for the tenth here, you're going to see it created a ticket for each stop on the schedule for that date. If I go and double click the ticket number, the order number, you'll see the line item. It went ahead and charged this customer $25 for this service. These route tickets are where you can store information. Maybe the, the route guy turns back in paperwork, so you can record exactly when he was there and when he left. This feeds into the reporting of comparing it against that budgeted amount of time, against the actual amount of time. You can put any comments in. And of course, you have the line items for billing, where you would have that weekly service charge. This is also where you could put in anything additional you need to charge for for this service. Maybe you guys did um, you know, something extra, or maybe that you used a part for this service that you have to bill for. You can put that on that service ticket just by hitting the item drop down and adding it. 
this route ticket list is going to be huge over time. You're going to have one ticket for every stop on the schedule that you ever do. This acts like your verification. If you did not do a service, you should not have a route ticket for it. So as you would kind of go through your week, you would, you know, at the end of the week, you would post your route. So at the end of the week of the 10th, we would move the schedule forward. Now everything is set up for the 17th. We would generate our route tickets. So if you look now, we've got tickets for the 10th and the 17th. You just kind of keep going through that process the whole month. Now, the nice thing about using route tickets, you can go to info and go to schedule versus tickets. So this is going to give you one list to look at of every stop and then the number of tickets created. So this is your go-to to find what stops were missed. If a stop was completed, you're going to have a number of tickets, you should have a one. If a stop was missed, you're going to have no tickets. You can easily find the stops that were missed and go get with the guys and figure out what was going on. Obviously, if it was missed, it probably should either be suspended or have a missed reason. Otherwise, maybe the guy skipped over it by accident or he's just not doing his job. Now, at the end of the month, what we can do is we would go to Route Info, Tickets Pending to Post. This is going to be where we could put in the date range for the month we're billing for. So let's say I'm billing for February. And you're going to see these are all the billable items from those route tickets. So right now, every customer got service so far twice this month. What this will do is it'll combine all these into one invoice that goes to QuickBooks for each customer. So Michelle here would get one invoice with two line items on there, each one for weekly service for $25. And it's going to date it when it goes into QuickBooks. You're going to see one charge for the 10th and one for the 17th, each for 25 Abby would get the same thing one for the 10th, one for the 17th, each for 25, so on and so forth. So you end up getting an itemized invoice in QuickBooks, one line per service, each one dated of the date of service. Now that's the quick and dirty way of kind of setting up per service billing. The other option is if you charge your customers maybe a flat rate for service, you could simply use the customer info and use the memorized transaction list. So here I could put in a customer that I have on my route schedule. I could then pick an item for billing. And then I would put in the rate that we charge them per month. And that, it's that simple. This is just going to be a list recording every customer and their monthly charge. And once a month, you can hit post to QuickBooks. This would create invoices for every customer on the list for the desired amount. Very similar to what memorized transactions do currently in QuickBooks. The one advantage about using the service program is I could, let's say, select monthly cleaning. And I could say maybe this is monthly service for we're billing 21 through 228 update descriptions so all my item descriptions would now have the date range that I'm billing for if you try to accomplish this with memorized transactions and QuickBooks bless you that that would take you hours to do go in each memorized transaction every month and change dates be a nightmare this makes it simple and easy 
We can even do a simplified per service billing on this page. So let's say they get charged 25 per service. And let's say we don't want, you know, if they're weekly, we don't want four items on their invoice, one for each stop. We just want a total quantity of maybe four times 25 is 100 for the month. We could tell the software to calculate something based off the route schedule. We're going to say we're billing for 120, or excuse me, for February 1st through February 28th based on the route schedule. You can calculate number of route stops. It totals up that there were two stops for this customer this month. So it does quantity two times your per service of 25 to give you a $50 total for that customer. So that's what we go into QuickBooks as the invoice, one line item instead of two individual line items if you did the route ticket way. I'm going to unmute everyone for any quick questions on what we've gone over so far I get into MapPoint. Michael, on the one that you just did, it says you, you it had a monthly cleaning set up, but you set it up as though it had been done twice. Would you also be changing that to biweekly? You, the, the item you use is irrelevant, whatever. I mean, if this was a bi-weekly customer, um, I had first set this up to demonstrate, you know, just like a flat month charge, but I did want to show you that you could use it to calculate per service. So maybe, gotcha. you know, I could do that in this scenario here, change that to weekly service, have it calculate. The weekly service, you were there twice, two weeks. 25 where you can have five weekly service. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now we're gonna I'm gonna put everyone back on mute here for a few minutes. I'm gonna talk about Microsoft Map Point, mapping the routes, optimizing them, and then I'll unmute everyone for questions at the end again. So we have a couple different ways we can actually map these stops and optimize them. To make it easy, I'm just gonna put everything onto one route. So we have a couple different stops to see. I'm gonna put everything also onto one date. So now I've got everything on my schedule for the 17th, assigned to Route 1. The easiest way I can map with MapPoint is pick a route and pick a date. And note that I'm using the assigned to and the assigned date when I'm mapping. And I'm just going to hit Map at the top of the route schedule. What this is going to do is open up Microsoft MapPoint and start plotting out my stops. And this is good. We actually have one that uh, it had trouble finding the address or the driver has a really horrible route, one or the other. Um, let's look at stop number seven here. So if I look at my route planner, which is the first thing I want to do in MapPoint, which is a little car icon up top, I can just see my stops listed out. Number seven is Abbott here, Randy. I want to check the service frame and double check his address. A quick and easy way, if I click on the route notes that is blue and underlined, you're going to see I can see my addresses side by side. So there's something MapPoint doesn't like about this address. So what I'm going to do is actually use the latitude and longitude for the customer, which I'm going to go to Google and I would write this down, itouchmaps, I believe it's uh, itouchmap.com. This is where I can take an address right from the service program, copy and paste it, and it'll give me a latitude and longitude. If you know how to use Google Maps or whatever other program to get a latitude and longitude, you can even use MapPoint to do it. I like this website because it's simple. It gives me the latitude longitude right away.
So I can take this and just copy and paste it. And I'm going to want to go into customer detail just by double clicking the customer name and pasting it in here. The latitude and longitude is going to take priority over the address when mapping. So now if I'm going to try to remap this here just by hitting my map button again. And we should get that customer a little closer to the others. Still doesn't look bad. Maybe I got the wrong address when I got my latitude and longitude. Well, for saving time here, I'm just going to remove this stop from the schedule so we can see the demonstration here. So here's our route. So right now, as it sits, the driver's got, it says it right here at the top in the summary, 256 miles, 4 hours and 27 minutes. Now what I want to do is hit optimize in the bottom left. This is going to look at distance, where the stops are, and reorder them to see if I can get a better order. And it looks like um, cut off about 25 minutes and about 20 miles here. So I could take this new order and order the stops that way in the service program. Number one is going to be Adams. Number two will be Abby. Three would be Avalo. Four would be Abbott. Five would be Robert here. So that's my new optimized order. Now that's the simple and easy way to optimize and map one route for one day. Now we have a bunch of other options. You can actually go to route info and route mapping. Here we can map, let's say, everything on the schedule just between two date ranges. You can map your entire schedule for the month regardless of the route and the day to get an overall efficiency and maybe move customers around. You can map everyone that you service on a specific day regardless of route or in a specific zip code. My favorite part about MapPoint is how we can use it to basically, if we have a new customer, find out where they need to be. So if I go to Route Info and map new distance for route stop, if I pick a new customer, one that's not currently on the schedule, I can hit Get Distance. Map Point is going to work behind the scenes here and search all my existing routes. So now it tells me right here where I should put this new customer. Well, I'm already servicing a customer that's only 3.85 miles away. I should put this new customer either before or after John Abbott. So I could just hit After. So that means I want to insert the new customer after John, hit yes. And now they're automatically on my route schedule after John. You don't have to remap this or re-optimize it. You already know it's in the best possible order. With MapPoint, there's also a few tricks. So if I map my route again, I'll show you a couple things here that may help.
I can right click on any stop and I can hit schedule stop. This is where I could put in a arrival or departure time if there were specific time constraints or I could put in a stop for put in an amount of minutes. This way my schedule will build out the time correctly that he arrives at 927 and is departing at 1002. Now what I really like, uh, this may not work for every industry, but if you do any work with commercial uh, accounts, um, restaurants, hospitals, anything like that, you can find nearby places. I can pick categories. I want all restaurants. I have all sorts of categories of businesses, post office, police station, pharmacies, shopping, stadium, theater, subway. I mean, there's a huge list here. I then can tell it to search maybe five miles within the entire route and refresh. And this is going to give me a list of possible businesses. I mean, basically, it's getting leads for you of maybe possible customers that are not on the route but are in the area. So here are movie theaters. Gives you the location, the name, phone number. A few minutes left. I'm going to unmute everyone. Does anyone have any questions uh, dealing with MapPoint? So do you have to reprint that or reroute it every time? Only obviously if you add somebody you're going to, but otherwise like if you have the same route, like if we have toilets in a certain area, um, porta potties, then you know, is that can that route pretty much just it's always gonna stay in there, it's gonna stay the same? Yeah, once you optimize the route, there's no need to optimize it again unless you add a stop. And then where is it stored? The schedule is stored here in the software. Once you put in the order, that's the stop number of how you want the driver to do the route, that always stays in the program. That never changes unless you change it. Okay. That's the order that the schedule will be printed out for the driver. And if I remap this, it'll send it to map point in this order. So there's no need, really no need to optimize it once you've done it. Originally, unless you added a bunch of stuff to that route. Okay, um, and then and so it's just very simple to add one. So if you were to add one, then you just remap it, and then it's going to just. If you're adding a stop, the probably the easiest way is you just map new distance for stop, like I showed. Uh huh. It tells you where the most efficient place to put that stop is, and then you wouldn't have to remap it because you already. You know, it already knows that if you put it okay. before or after the stop, it's already kind of in order, if you will. The only time where you may have to remap it is, let's say, you know, it's recommended to put it on a Monday route. That customer has to be on Wednesday. You may then have to add it on to a Wednesday route and remap the Wednesday route to get the next Okay, so, and then you would keep that route schedule the same even if you have um, items that are going to be um, different frequencies. Correct, yeah. This, um, if you have items that are weekly and bi-weekly, you know, you may have one week where you don't have any of your bi-weekly stops in there. If you keep the same order, you're just going to be missing, you know, some of your bi-weekly. The next week, you know, jump back into this order and all the buyers okay. keep the same stop number so it'll all fall back into line. Okay. Because we're gonna be having, you know, we'll have to put things weekly, bi weekly and monthly all on the same route. Yep. And a lot of uh, companies um, that I've seen that have bi weekly like this one here, if I go next week and look at the schedule, the schedule's gonna be number one, two, three, four, five and seven, because my bi-weekly is not going to be in there. Okay. So you 
may want to do all your biweeklies as, you know, biweekly could be uh, like 5.1 or something, and that could be 6. And then if you had multiple biweeklies in between, you know, use decimals for the stop number biweeklies. That way next week when you go to this, you'll still have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then your biweeklies will always fall in between the weeklies where they should be. Okay. Can you hear me? Barely. Um, I, I assume we just haven't got to this part yet, but if I own a porta potty company and if somebody calls in and says, hey, I need a, a toilet delivery, would, I would schedule the delivery on the route, okay, and then do I also then have to schedule it for the following week for the actual service, or does it is it done one time, you know, for the delivery and then the route, or do, is, that a, is that two I, different steps? That would be two different uh, entries on the schedule. I would have a frequency called delivery. Okay. That would not reoccur. Length of day is zero and would be deleted after it is complete. That okay. would be the same thing. Do you manually delete it? Just after. Just after. Just after. Okay. Now notice I'm checking off delete after posting route, meaning once that delivery or pickup is complete, it's going to remove itself automatically from the schedule. Now we haven't. Uh, I think the rentals, the rental class is uh, sometime tomorrow, and that's when if someone calls in to order a toilet, you would go through the process of entering a rental. Okay. The customer would put the item on rental, and then in the top right, you can see it. Uh, you would maybe pick route one. You're going to say delivery for today, put it on the route, and then I would say now we're going to put it on for weekly service starting the following Monday, put on route, and now it's instantly on the route schedule okay. for delivery and a weekly service. So once we go through the routing class, that'll make more sense. Literally one step when you're entering everything on that one rental transaction. By the time you're done, you'll have it set up for delivery and for the service, and you'll be good to go. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. I hope everyone had a um, has a great afternoon. I thank you for coming to the classes if you came to both today, and I look forward to seeing you uh, seeing you tomorrow. Thank Take you. Care.